Hey everyone, today we're doing a video looking at some new tools that we got in. These are silk screens. We have a couple of different ones, different generations of liquid coolers. And the idea here is we'll use these in the future to reapply thermal paste to the cold plate of a liquid cooler. And the point of that, rather than just using one of these or something and kind of putting it on the surface and tightening the, the device down, the idea is that it will allow us to do more uh, like for like testing with cooling to make sure that the thermal paste application is not an interfering factor in our test methodology. We'll talk about that more in a second. Before getting to the content, this is brought to you by iBuyPower and their new Element Gaming PC, which has the Arc LED fans, underglow lighting, and large tempered glass windows. Okay, so the point of this is to improve our thermal testing methodology. It's already pretty good. We've done videos on it in the past if you haven't seen it. But this specifically will allow us to, for example, uh, test one of these out of the box when we first get it. And then maybe a year from now, we want to do regression testing, which would be basically pulling old components out, retesting them for various reasons. One could be, uh, has liquid permeated? Is there a loss of liquid, whatever? Or maybe we just changed test platforms and we need to retest CPU aging, all that kind of stuff. So in such test environments, one concern would be the thermal paste because when we apply it stock from the factory, that's obviously the most representative of a real world user scenario. But when we go apply it later for regression testing, different application methods might have half a degree to one degree Celsius swing. If I apply it myself versus use it as the factory did, even my own application methods could vary a little bit from test to test. And it's not a huge difference in general, as long as you kind of have a, a routine that you do when you apply thermal compound, but it's enough where we want to just eliminate that variance from testing. So I have not used these yet. And we're going to try this out today. This is a silk screen. This is what Asetech uses in their factory for applying compound to their CLC cold plates. And uh, basically this is, this is an EVGA one specifically, which I just chose because we used it for the 1060 recently and I took it off. Uh, so you can see here the kind of cutout in the surface and that matches the drill pad, the screw pattern for the uh, underside near the cold plate. So we can put these together and that's just a silk screen like you'd use for a shirt. They go together. Uh, let's see if I can show that on camera. Go together just like this. Pretty much a perfect fit. It's got four spots for the mounting holes in the corners. And then you end up with that on the surface. So then we can put the paste down, apply it with one of these, which is just like an acrylic scoop that happens to be the same size uh, as that. And I don't, I don't know why. I guess they just had extra metal and acrylic line around because uh, it does seem a bit overkill for this, this purpose. But that's what we got. So that's one option. We have these, these are Gen 5. So these are for Gen 5 liquid coolers from Ace Attack. These are for Gen 4 liquid coolers. And uh, the, Ace, the EVGA one is sort of a 4.5, something like that. It's a little bit different. Uh, so we've got these NZXT ones, Corsair coolers, the H100i. Some of those coolers use, uh, use stuff that we could actually use these on for reapplying thermal paste. So uh, pretty good range of coolers we can use this on. So let's try it out. I've not tried it yet. Uh, so we'll see if it works. <laughs> this, by the way, just in further effort of uh, keeping very consistent test methodology, that is actually the same compound that's used on these coolers. So that too is the same. So at this point, we're, we're basically applying the same compound in the same fashion that Asetech would do for Corsair NZXT liquid coolers. Uh, so we should have a pretty good means of representing those products as they arrive from the factory. Let's see how the, this goes. Not super great. Oh, there it goes, sweet. It's a lot of excess. I feel like I'm going to make my own spreader or something. <laughs> this seems terribly inefficient, but uh, it's clearly working. It's going through the screen. Let's see if we can do this a little better. It's just 
is a, there's a lot of compound loss here. So I'm going to try and fix that in our own uh, updated version of this. But for a uh, baseline, it's not bad. I really you could do do it just with plastic utensils, more or less. Sweet, that's looking pretty good. So the cool thing about this, I'm not sure how well it shows up on camera, but we've got a pretty even spread of this stuff across the surface, and it's not coming up when I run the thing back across it, so there's no issue where doing this is picking back up the compound that's already been spread. And that's just because it's pushed through the screen already, so we're not touching it. Uh, so let's, let's separate these carefully and see how well it works. Not bad. You could certainly do a little bit better right there. But I mean, really, if you've seen a lot of these things, like we have, we've shown a lot of them certainly, uh, the spread pattern, other than you know, there's a little bit of imperfection out at the edges, a little bit of imperfection there just because the first time using it. But the spread pattern, if you look at the compound itself, is the same as what we get from the factory. And, and what I mean by that is you can see the little dots in it. Those little dots are just from the silk screen. Uh, so that's pretty sweet. It actually works. And I think I've even got, ah, oh, dang it, I threw it on the ground. So I've even got these. I haven't thrown them all away. So I, we could basically uh, put compound back on when we're done testing or doing a hybrid build and reseal it like that. And it's basically a brand new unit. So that's pretty damn cool. I'm excited about that. Uh, that's good for storage too, because now I can keep them all in the same place and I won't be sorting through which ones have been used and which haven't. So I think that pretty much takes care of that. Again, could certainly spread it a little more evenly, but you get the idea. Uh, we can use this for our upcoming liquid cooler roundup as well, where we're going to be showing some of the old stuff retested. Yeah, not bad. So what I just did there has resolved some of the issues down the corner. Uh, I'm happy with that. Just a special custom made tool that we're gonna be using uh, for future content. You're probably not gonna see a lot of it in the A-roll in the future, but this will show you how it works. So if you're ever curious why we're able to reuse the same cooler and have it looking exactly like it does from the factory rather than putting a blob down, which is certainly fine, but for testing, that's gonna be more accurate to what we get on day one. Uh, now you'll know how that happens. So as always, thank you for watching. Patreon link in the post video if you want to help us out directly. Subscribe for more content. Part three of the, uh, the hybrid build for the Titan X is either online already when you see this or will be coming very soon. So check for that. I'll see you all next time.